Okay, everyone, we're going to get started. We have a full house today. Uh, for those of you who just joined, make sure to enable your chat box. Um, there's an icon to the left-hand side of your screen. Click on this, and then the chat room uh, will open up to the right-hand side of your screen. And at the very end of the session, uh, you can type in your questions. So let's get started. Uh, welcome and hi everyone. This is Geraldine Worry, your host for today's presentation of Trend Atelier's latest macro trend forecast. So today I'm going to give you a comprehensive introduction to Autumn Winter 1617 Wonder Wander. It's one of our key concepts, and I'm going to walk you through the big ideas impacting long-term design direction for the style and fashion industries. And it's a really exciting trend direction. So um, you know, make sure you log, log on and really pack in all this information. So, and it, of course, if you have any issues, email me at hello at geraldinemori.com. But otherwise, I've sent you all the instructions you need. And if for some reason you get logged out because the internet can be sometimes unpredictable, just make sure you click on your um, unique registration link again. So let's start with a bit of house cleaning. If you can, turn off your phones, close your other screens, and now I'm going to walk you through the agenda. And also, feel free to share feedback and impressions about the presentation on your social media platforms, as you'll see that the topics I'm going to cover today are very inspirational and exciting. So um, our Twitter handle is at Trend Atelier, and please do interact with us. Uh, we'd be very excited to hear from you on your different social media platforms. So um, we don't, just so you know, we don't usually hold complimentary webinars, but this is something we wanted to do to mark the launch of Wonder Wander and to coincide with our new and exciting partnership with Fashion Mag. So for those of you who may not know Fashion Mag, they're a very large industry resource, especially for news. And their newsletter alone goes to over 700,000 people and is published in 10 languages. So we will be providing regular trend news on their site, so make sure to uh, stay connected on Fashion Mag. It's, it's a great way to also get uh, trend and fashion industry news. So today, um, the session will last a half hour, and then we will open the floor to questions and answers. So it should total about around 45 minutes. And we've got three subchapters that are key in this trend. Digital spiritual, poetic tech, and future heritage. And finally, I will go over um, a preview of the color direction for the season. So a little bit about myself and Trend Atelier. I'm Geraldine Mori, and I run Trend Atelier. We're a London-based inspiration studio specialized in future trends research and analysis. And my work inspires design teams through seminars, fashion and textile designs, and targeted bespoke trend research and analysis. And we work with clients such as Stylus, uh, Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, Samsung, the British Library, Seven for All Mankind. So it's quite diverse because we tend to focus on macro trend research and emerging trends. And um, I also work with small, medium-sized businesses to help them navigate the trends and adapt them to their own needs. And Trend Atelier and myself have been featured in magazines worldwide, including The Creative Review, El País, El Denmark, Uppercase, uh, Trendland, and as you know, more recently, Fashion Mag. So another thing, and this is what you see on your screen here, is that I'm known for creating a seminar series called Fashion Forecasting, Trend Hunting and Gathering, which is the methodology I've outlined to teach how to research and analyze trends. And so I, work, I run workshops and courses on this, and we'll be releasing an online course soon, so make sure to stay tuned. So for Trend Atelier, the beauty of trend forecasting is the idea that we can inspire your design choices and push innovation and generally just thinking outside of the box. So our specialty is to give you expert research and analysis that will help you implement innovation into your seasonal concepts and obviously within your brand DNA. So it's always very interesting for us to see how the design direction we give gets reinterpreted. And essentially, we're really here to enable well-informed creative decisions that will lead to your business success. 
Um, and finally, before I move on to your trend presentation, I just want to say that this is a very interesting time to go back to the creative process and individual thinking, uh, especially with the speed at which trends go viral due to social media and the internet of things. We, we are really redefining what is different and what is new, as well as the shelf life of a trend. So this is a challenge, obviously, for all trend forecasting agencies and a challenge for the style and fashion industries as a whole. So as we focus on innovation and have been tracking the trends for several years, we've been seeing the shift uh, going from innovation coming through fashion to more and more the innovation coming through materials and technology with a focus on lifestyle and really seeking quality in the everyday. So you will really see this focus in Wonder Wander. And this is also reflected in a very recent article on the Business of Fashion website stating that um, it is time for the fashion industry to reconsider its business model as there's a growing shift and demand towards experiences rather than ownership. So Wonder Wander, and what does this mean to you for your Autumn Winter 1617 design direction? So Wonder Wander proposes a new definition of cultural identity and spirituality. And this is a trend looking inwards and seeking betterment through new belief systems and proposing new self-help tools through digital avenues. Stylistically, it creates a hybrid of anthropological references because there's a nomadic and tribal aspect to this trend. And it's also a very good direction for beauty as we turn to 3D face mapping, technology and digital makeup printing. So interestingly, these beauty concept, concepts also refer to ancient tribal masks. And in terms of shape and design details, it references ceremonial robes and costumes, oversized and overlayered with inclusions of decorative patterns. And tapping into nomadic cultural references, this theme explores new virtual environments and cities, which is probably one of the exciting aspects of this trend, uh, considering really never before seen ways of connecting with leisure, again tied in with video game experiences and augmented reality. So um, in terms of how this trend has evolved from previous seasons we forecasted, Voodoo for Autumn Winter 1516 was about ritualistic traditions and multicultural folklore, which was projected into the future in this kind of sci fi aesthetic that provided also a new interpretation of artisanship. And with Spring Summer 16 Modern Fables, we looked at European folk stories and very much focused on concepts of death rebirth and the occult with um, gothic literature and gothic aesthetics underpinning also this trend. Wonder Wander for Autumn Winter 1617 is about a new nomadic civilization tapping into digital aesthetics and proposing ways of expressing our cultural heritage as well as our feelings of inner self and outer self and investigating lifestyle and escapism. So this is a spiritual trend looking for the deeper meaning in life and also looking at the connections between humans, our happiness, and our deepest fears. So this trend voices an era of self-examination with a growing number of people reporting that they have no religious affiliation. And um, so this theme really is driven by society's need for significance, and it explores the future meaning of spirituality and um, our perception of our inner self and our core beliefs. So this, this slide is, is quite key as it introduces several aspects of Wonder Wander. And um, as you can probably tell from what I've just explained, this is quite an individual-centric direction, looking at how we can express our identity and how we can convey our personal experiences, our anxieties, our hopes. So designers, artists, coders, and digital engineers explore the meaning of cultural heritage, human connection, and digital interactivity, and uh, propose new paradigms in beauty, 
body image and help allow a shift in perception towards human enhancement that is generated outside of the medical field. And what's interesting in how these needs are underpinned is um, obviously with video gaming and virtual reality, not only those fields are influencing this direction aesthetically in a, in a very prominent way, but they're obviously also determining how we experience this shift towards a better lifestyle and seeking to escape through mind-altering experiences that are, that are drug-free. So traditional rituals, uh, costumes, and representations collide with new ways of communicating cultural uh, heritage via smartphones and selfies. And so I'm going to walk you through some of the references on this slide. So at the center of the page, you have Marlon Keller, and she's a photographer and illustrator based in London. And in her Dante illustrations for November magazine, she depicts distorted human figures seeking to destabilize the viewer and provoke a spiritual experience questioning isolation and the human connection. And so her work shows how this trend examines changing perceptions of how we connect to each other, experience love, experience happiness, and our deeper selves through digital avenues. And to the top left-hand side of your screen, um, this is a project called Viet Cam by Eliska Kiselkova. And she was inspired by Vietnamese culture and the changing values of its younger generation. Seeing the world through lenses of smartphones and selfies, the series focuses on the connection between traditional culture and new technology. And um, at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, uh, I'm showing Jenna Lee's project. She was a Central St. Martin's graduate, and she developed this project called The Future Human, which imagined digital skin as a virtual overlay, providing a kind of strange dichotomy between anonymity and tribal identity. And this project was done in collaboration with Microsoft. And um, it's essentially this type of morphing mask and signaled other um, groundbreaking projects we saw, such as Emote, which is a Japanese um, digital design proposition using real-time face tracking and image mapping to represent Japanese beauty ideals, as well as reference Japanimation. So here, really, projection mapping is key and offers poetic possibilities around beauty concepts, representing the face as the mirror, reflecting the human soul, and offering never-before-seen ideals of beauty. And in, your, in the full forecast, you'll, you'll see I expand on these ideas. And uh, I expand on, on the fact that we are more than ever before blending old and new technologies. I also want to point out, before I move on to the next slide, um, that in terms of color direction, Wonder Wander offers a very interesting tension between deep digital brights emerging out of the dark, such as purples, blues, and pinks. And the direction can also be taken in a pri primal combination of greens, reds, and yellows. And this is really representing the dichotomy between the digital and the tribal. Now, our next slide, I will play for you this quick video of a GIF project. I just wanted for you to see really the interesting movement of this project. So to give you the overview of this, the idea is that there's a very legendary quality to Wonder Wander, and it looks at digital heroes with augmented powers as the magical world of virtual reality opens us up before us and becomes more and more mainstream, fantasy, this type of fantasy world, empowers people to create superhero visions of themselves. And these superheroes explore the world. So in the context of the first ever virtual fashion week, Rose collaborated with Google to build a WebGL platform that gives designers the opportunity to recreate to rediscover their creative process. So that was the GIF I just played for you. And they created a WebGL tool that allows to find inspiration in unconventional shapes, fabrics, and silhouettes, and helps really push the boundaries of design uh, within the codes of the internet age, really changing the blueprint of fashion as we know it. And at the top center, 
a way to go is an interactive video game that is non-competitive. It's really just for pleasure and to remind us that life is this endless chase through ever-changing landscapes. And it's directed by um, by digital uh, designer and director Vincent Moise. And uh, you could really play for minutes. The, these minutes could feel like hours as your character just walks through this black and white forest before emerging in this surreal kaleidoscope of color. And what the creator says, which is quite interesting, is that at a moment when we have access to so much and see so little, Way to Go will remind you of all that lies before you, within you, in the luscious sudden pleasure of discovery. So um, him and his team really created this video game as an exercise in meditation. In terms of exploring the contradiction between futuristic textures and traditional silhouettes, I'm featuring at the right-hand side of your screen Xuan Zheng, who is a fashion designer born and raised in China, but um, attending Parsons School. So there is an importance here of video games, um, light projections, um, fabric treatments, also trying to recreate these iridescence and uh, light effects that we see in video games. And um, traditional dresses and cloak shapes are key here. And I, I, I expand on this as well in the full forecast. And so in terms of textures, it's important to focus on the use of metallics and apply chine with coatings and even oversized iridescent sequins. So next slide, I'm going to play for you this video, which lasts about two, a little under two minutes, and explains um, another project done by Vincent Mohisse, I think, as a, as a director, he's quite key, his vision is quite key for this trend direction. And so this is an interactive music video done for Arcade Fire's single reflector, and it explores several feel themes in the song. And um, it really pushes the boundaries of what can be achieved with WebGL graphic libraries. And um, you'll, in this particular video, the smartphone becomes an interactive wand shining a new light on the content. You'll see the, the full video explains what I'm talking about. And I highly invite you to actually visit this site. It's uh, justareflector.com. And you'll see yourself that you can play with the video. Just a Reflector is an interactive film that explores the themes in Arcade Fire's new single, Reflector, through two devices simultaneously, the computer and smartphone. Directed by Vincent Morissette, in collaboration with Aaron Copeland, the film follows a young Haitian woman as she travels between her world and our own. Vincent and Aaron wanted to create a new form of interactive storytelling, one that allows technology to enhance the film rather than distract from it. Just a Reflector pushes the boundaries of music videos by combining traditional film techniques with cutting edge web technologies. With teams working across different time zones, we began with prototypes, affecting shaders using gyroscope and accelerometer data, syncing sounds between multiple devices, dynamically generating animations using tracking data, predicting the user's phone location off-screen. These early experiments were refined as filming took place in Haiti and Montreal. The technologies used in the film are accessible to any developer with Google Chrome, and the code was released as open source, available for anyone to explore on the site's tech page. The project received widespread international press recognition across multiple industries, including music, technology, and general news. Social media coverage was equally strong, trending on Twitter and Instagram feeds worldwide. In a final twist, we incorporated the user's video feed so they could become part of the experience, be featured in the actual film, and help Excel break through to the other side. So technology allows greater interactivity 
in storytelling and brings us into a world of superpowers. And this digital aesthetic and augmented reality inspires mutable and fluid graphic effects and finishes. So here, look at oil slicks and iridescence as key. And obviously, we've seen this come through in fabric treatments, but what's key here is its presence in graphic effects and digital renderings. So really try to incorporate that if you're even a textile designer or a print and pattern designer. So um, on this slide also, I show how um, to explore the idea of melting, burning, and shifting hues. So this could be your update to ombre effects taken into an autumn winter realm with shades airing towards grays and purples. So now on to our next chapter, which is poetic tech. So moving into an age of poetic tech, designers investigate technology that is emotional and intuitive. And architects and engineers propose new ways to deal with society's ever-evolving relationship with life, death, technology, and the afterlife. So Wonder Wander steps back and considers the larger issues in life and how a contemplative and peaceful experience can be recreated through the digital space. And it softly taps into our deeper emotional needs. And with this, we create a new template for experiencing being human and life significance in the digital age. So at the top left-hand side of your screen, the Shinjuku is a multi-story charnel house designed by famous architect Kiyoshi Takeyama. And this is Japan's new breed of high-tech urban skyscraper cemeteries. And it's located in uh, the very famous Tokyo shopping district. So this represents Japan's high-tech attempt to solve the shortage of available finding, final resting places in the urban environment and offers really a template for other cities around the world to reconsider um, uh, how we experience grieving and uh, how we experiencing visiting uh, our loved ones who have passed. What is also particularly compelling is the virtual reality game called Deep, and this is a game that was created to relieve anxiety attacks by Irish developer Owen Harris. And he explains, I've had anxiety problems for as long as I can remember. So the way he created the game was using a virtual reality headset with headphones and this custom built self calibrating belt that matches uh, the breathing patterns with the on screen movements. So Deep is in essence a digital version of a diaphragmatic exercise. And it's by breathing deeply that we then experience uh, how we ascend and descend around a beautifully rendered autumn underwater expanse full of magnificent cliffs and glittering corals. So what's interesting also is that although Harris created the game just for himself, it has now been become in instrumental for many in uh, relieving anxiety attacks. So the focus here is how technology and augmented reality can become humanistic and allow great support during pivotal human life experiences. And design is also here receptive to the elements and sensitively harnessing the delicate forces of the natural world. And so this is a poetic performance aesthetic that will influence sports and casuals. And it looks at synthetic materials and trims such as climbing rope, fish-like armor textiles, um, those were developed by the army, or basket weaving made of plastic, and how those can be um, put against and in contrast nature. So to the bottom right-hand side of your screen, uh, these trees, these tree-like structures are called super trees, and they actually exist and dominate the gardens by the bay landscape, and are go up high to up to 50 meters, and are fitted with environmental technologies that mimic the ecological functions of trees. So there are photovoltaic cells that are on these structures, and those harness solar energy, which is then used for lighting and collection of water to um, irrigate the fountain displays in the park. And so these super trees also provide um, exhaust functions for the conservatory's cooling systems. And so this type of architecture really taps into the grandiose 
and celebrates technology using nature's intelligence, resulting in very futuristic engineering and architectural solutions. And this also ties into the fact that in our future cities, we will be seeing more and more vertical gardens. And this is already taking place in Asia and places like Singapore, um, where these, types, these countries are suffering from lack of space. Now, our next and final slide for um, Poetic Tech uh, looks at pattern and how you could um, translate this trend in terms of pattern. And so here we look at interpretations of florals and a combination of Eastern and Western aesthetics with Japanese and Chinese influences using orchids and cherry blossoms. But here it's key to really consider delicate metallic touches and paintbrush markings. And I just want to point out in the center of the slide um, that we also look at oversized and unisex soft tailorings, very directional tailoring concepts that refer to ceremonial cloaks, which I expand upon um, in the full forecast. So now on to our third and final big idea for um, Wonder Wander, future heritage. So as mentioned before, designers and digital engineers investigate notions of cultural identity and propel them into the future. So this defines our notion of heritage and how we choose to express it in, a cult in this digital era. So traditional rituals from the Eastern and Southern hemispheres embrace the tension between the past and the future, and we find meaning and significance in traditional decorative arts, propelling them into a contemporary vision of craft in this ongoing process of um, documenting the existing sheltered and local artisan cultures, and then combining them with a considered and futuristic design approach. So uh, we refer back, for example, to ancient recolored photos, such as um, at the top left-hand side of your screen, this is a series called Russia Before the Revolution. And it was shot by Sergei Prokhrudin Gorsky in 1911. He, he happens to also be famous for photographing Leo Tolstoy. So the color process that Gorky, Gorsky worked with required three separate black and white exposures, and each one was taken um, through either a red, green, or blue filter. And when the filtered exposures were combined, the result was this very full chromatic spectrum. And this really uh, is an interesting parallel with the current filters we see in our, in our Instagram culture. And... Um, I see Yesim Eroktem, um, she's the designer who created these homewares. Um, she drew on her Turkish heritage for a new line of contemporary products. And the collection just started out as a business idea on how to contemporize um, a shop in Istanbul's Grand Bazaar. So the bazaar presented Eroktem with this opportunity to really present a new approach to the shops in this very ancient marketplace. And so the very craft culture that, is sel that has been sheltered for centuries uh, provided the designer with a very rich foundation. And she was then able to collaborate with the local craftsmen um, and bring this very contemporary design language. Now, in terms of... Um, in terms of uh, the ceremonial aspect that I've been talking about, we look at elongated parker shapes, experimental knitwear combinations, and makeup concepts that emulate ceremonial clothing. And here, uh, some of the research really ties into Inuit culture, which, was, which comes from Alaska and Canada. So here we explore the idea of heavy winter outerwear that is adorned and patched work and channels these polar um, ancient cultures. And makeup concepts tie into the decorative shapes that we see on the Inuit masks um, here featured at the center of the screen. And in the full forecast, we explore uh, another nomadic aspect to the trend, which is the growing number of remote offices and hotels that are catering to flexible working. And the fact even recently some statistics came out that most millennials now require flexible working as a key criteria in not only taking on a new job, but also keeping a new job. And we have a number of new websites 
that are off that are featuring cities worldwide with charts and data on how much it costs to live in these cities and all the details around the quality of life there. So in terms of um, video projected video projection and filtered light influences, um, this is really coming through as well in uh, the print and pattern direction and taps into the spiritual and the divine and the juxtaposition of the future and history. And you could also call this a kind of tactile digital uh, direction. I just want to play for you this uh, GIF that is that I'm featuring and this particular GIF is, is quite important and I'm going to explain what this project is about. Uh, this animation is part of the 50 meter wide six story building uh, on New Bond Street, London, that became the canvas for a creative agency, Foxhall Studio, to curate an art direct for emerging artists. And so in this slide, I show textile weaver Teresa Georgialis and digital artist Universal Assembly Unit. So they work together to create a digital fabric, which is a very, very interesting concept. So this digital fabric responds to sound input and is encoded with inaudible sound frequencies outside the human spectrum. So here the idea is that technical woven patterns inform digital animations and a jacquard loom is misused to create a digital weaving where threads, knots, and loose ends are replaced by pixels and glitches. And this slide also is a good example of how to successfully combine the different shades in Wonder Wander and have a kaleidoscope color palette, especially with the map rendering of the moon here at the left hand side of your screen. So now on to our final chapter of this presentation, the color spectrum. And as you've, as you've noticed, um, it's quite an eclectic direction for color as we go from purples, blues, and pinks to yellows and reds. So there's a primal and stark aspect to Wonder Wander in terms of color. And it's key here to pair fire red and sunflower yellow with moody darks and touches of ochre and green to really ground the palette and give it a kind of moody and serious quality. There is also a very sensual and feminine um, aspect to the palette where m wine meets electric blues for deep surreal combinations of hues, utilizing a range of purples and mauves. And this is where you see this really digital aesthetic come through. So this concludes um, our comprehensive introduction to our Autumn Winter 16-17 forecast, Wonder Wonder. And the full trend forecast is available on this link. If you go to GeraldineWarrior.com and click on Trend Atelier, you will see Wonder Wander pop up. And for today only and the next hour, we're offering the recording of the session for 30 pounds only, um, with the value of the full forecast actually being 300 pounds. So this is an enticing offer we wanted to share with the attendees of this webinar only. And Right after this, I'm going to send you all a follow-up email with everything you need to know. And if it's okay with you, I will all add you to my newsletter, uh, Trend Atelier's newsletter. And if, if you wish to unsubscribe, just uh, shoot us a quick email and we'll make sure to not uh, clog your, your inbox. So now, a last point. We have one more macro trend session for this season, which is called Press and Play, and it will go live in about two weeks. So stay tuned as we send the schedule for the next webinar. And so now I will open the floor for questions. So hi, everyone. Thank you for attending. Please feel free now to ask questions about the concept or share with the other attendees what most inspired you about uh, Wonder Wonder. I'm going to post a little message um, just to 
open the chat room for answers. We've got about five minutes um, to share any feedback. And thank you again for joining today. Okay, I don't see any questions coming through. So this is our last chance to open the floor for an interesting debate around this trend, which offered a lot to think about around new digital avenues to experience, um, experience our daily life. So if you would like to, if you need to go back to your days, I understand it's the middle of the day, if you're in UK time or GMT time, uh, feel free to email us at, at Hello at GeraldineMori.com, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Catherine, thanks. This was really comprehensive. Great. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, we, you know, we really wanted to give you a very full introduction of autumn winters 2016-17 and what really what Trend Activity stands for in terms of uh, trend forecasts. Yes, the, meta, the metallic iridescent finishes for graphics and this kind of digital rendering aesthetic is a, is a really interesting way to, um, to do new types of renderings for graphics. And I think also textile design would be really interesting. So Grace, are you a graphic designer? Are you a textile designer? Great, textile student and stylist for online retail. Great, very interesting. I'm assuming most of you are in the fashion industry. I know some of the people attending are trend forecasters as well and designers, so this is a great crowd. I think we're just about done, unless you have any other questions. Um, again, just make sure to email, email us, hello at GeraldineMori.com. It's been really great having you today. And um, to stay up to date with our news, we'll be sending you our newsletter. And so you will, in the newsletter, we share all sorts of interesting facts. We, we share um, blog of the month, we share color, fashion, design, graphic inspiration, we share our current events, press clippings, so you'll get a ton of information through those. Okay, Grace, in my design work, I focus mainly on prints using digital process to, to create. So you use a lot of digital printing. This trend is definitely very conducive to interesting digital printing effects. That's great. 
Okay, well, I'm going to close the session now. Thanks again, everyone. And it was great to be able to share the trend Wonder Wonder with you. It's been an amazing season in terms of trend inspiration. I think autumn winter 2016 17 will really, really be an exciting season in fashion and in the style industries. Oh, I just see an exciting question. Dhruva Tripathi, why did you decide this theme? Um, well, I don't personally decide the themes because as a trend forecaster and as a trend agency, uh, we have to make sure we don't put too much of our personal uh, preferences into our trend forecasts. Um, this, the theme really appears to us because we do, uh, we do a lot of research. We canvas everything from art, technology, design, to science, uh, socio, uh, socioeconomics, the news. And based on this, we notice patterns of behavior and we're able then to make sure, uh, we're able to clearly see that some trends are emerging. And so how the, this is how the theme essentially um, appears to us. And this is from seeing enough relevant and emerging trends that are around one specific thing, we're able to say, okay, well, this is a trend that is really emerging. And sometimes, sometimes it's just more based on text and research, and there aren't that many visuals yet, and then that could really be very much of a future trend that hasn't really hit the, the catwalks yet, which is essentially very much what makes a macro trend. They're, they're, much, they're much more future thinking. So we don't per, per se, uh, personally decide on the theme what I'm trying to say is that the theme almost comes to us and it emerges quite clearly as we do the research well thank you everyone for attending and um, we will close the session now and uh, stay stay in touch and please Feel free to share your feedback and impressions on the presentation uh, on Twitter at trendatelier.com. Have a great day and, thank, and enjoy your weekend. It's a beautiful day here in London.